in the short Bible study today, we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 through 33, uh, which issues for us as we read it this universal call of wisdom, which we recall from verse 7 in chapter 1, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Here in chapter 1 of Proverbs, we see what is often uh, utilized in this book, that wisdom is personified. That is, wisdom speaks as a person. We understand from the remainder of Scripture that wisdom is a person, that wisdom is another way of referring to Jesus. In John chapter 1, Jesus is referred to as the Word of God. He is the knowledge of God. He is the wisdom of God. He was with God in the beginning, and by Him all things were created. In the book of Proverbs, we see that wisdom was with God in the beginning. Then there in the New Testament, we see that connection made that Jesus is the Word of God, that Jesus is the wisdom of God. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, we see that in salvation, that Jesus becomes to us, he becomes the wisdom of God. That is, that we, we come to understand that Jesus is. He is the source, he is the embodiment, he is the personification of wisdom. He indeed is God and the fullness of deity dwells within him. In fact, again there in Colossians chapter 2, verse 3, we see that in Jesus are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge. And so as we read and study Proverbs chapter 1, uh, beginning there in verse 20 down through 33, we hear the voice of Jesus. We hear the voice of God calling out to people calling out, in fact, universally in the world for people to become wise. It says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. So here we we, we read of this universal call of the wisdom of God for people to listen. This universal call for people to become wise. And wisdom, this call of God, is going out in the day-to-day -day business of life. We see that God's call is coming to people while they're there in the market doing their business, while they're there in their street doing the traveling, while they're there at the entrance of the city gates seeking justice, that in all of these things in life that God brings about his call to become wise and to be, begin to fear and to respect his name and to love his son Jesus. And the call goes like this in verse 22, how long, O oh, simple ones, that is naive ones, how long, O oh, simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing, and fools hate knowledge. How, how long? He says, if you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. There is a call that comes out all throughout our lifetime where God is calling for us to become wise to begin becoming wise by fearing and respecting his name, and then to grow in that wisdom by obeying him, respecting him with the kind of respect that is followed by obedience to his word. And in this way, we become wise, and we no longer delight in scoffing at truth, at mocking truth, at mocking the word of God, at mocking the wisdom of God. No, we, we begin to love God, and we begin to love truth, and we begin to love His Word. This kind of call is even evident to us in Romans chapter 13, verse 11 through 12, which says, Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. 
The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. You see this promise that wisdom that God makes to us, to the simple who will listen. He says in verse 23 of Proverbs 1, If you turn at my reproof, at my correction, if you repent, if you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Ultimately, we see this promise fulfilled uh, in the coming of Jesus. He spoke in John 7, verse 38, about this promise that those who believe in him, those who trust in him, those who listen to his words, those who listen to the wisdom of God, he says that he will put his spirit within them. We understand that this is what God does for those who believe in him, that God puts his spirit within them. And God begins to make us to be more like himself. And because his Holy Spirit is living within us, he makes us to grow in wisdom. He makes us to grow in the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and in peace and patience, kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. He makes us to grow in all of these, which all of those attributes, all of those fruit, those are, those are exemplifications of wisdom lived out in our life. But you know, there's consequences for not listening to the voice of God. He says, verse 24 of Proverbs 1, Because I have called you, called, and you refuse to listen, and have stretched out my hand, and no one has heeded, because you have ignored all my counsel and would have had would have none of my reproof i also will laugh at your calamity i will mock when terror strikes you when terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you you see the bible tells us in galatians chapter 6 that do not be deceived god is not mocked Whatever one sows, that he will also reap. You may read verses 24 through 27 and think, wow, that's, that's harsh. That's harsh that, that when calamity comes upon us, when we have ignored the word of God, when calamity comes upon that God sits back and he allows that to happen. And it says here that he that wisdom even even laughs and mocks at us. Why? Because justice is being served. Because we are getting what we deserve. We're getting what we deserve. And it's not that God has been unmerciful or unkind or ungracious or unhelpful. In fact, in all of the aspects of life, God has been calling to us in wisdom and calling to us to be to be no longer simple but to be wise and to believe in him and to live according to his word. And when we reject that, there are consequences. And God is justified. God is justified in rejoicing in that. And the, the fact is that when we ignore the word of God and when we embrace folly and foolishness and sin, there are consequences both temporal consequences, that is consequences in this life, and there are eternal consequences. You can see the product of, of foolishness in a person's life and in the outcome uh, temporally and in, in the outcome of their day-to-day -day and in the years and as the years pass in their life. But also, when a person ignores the voice of God in their life and they enter into eternity at death, there is an eternal consequence for their folly of ignoring the call of God to believe in Jesus. And that eternal consequence is hell. But for those who listen to God, for those who heed the voice of God, they have everlasting life in Jesus. But you know, most of the time when people ignore counsel, when we ignore the call of wisdom and we embrace folly, we find ourselves in trouble. We find ourselves in trouble and a person finds themselves in great need. And it's at those times that people decide, oh, well, well, now I need to call on God and God will be obligated to answer me and God will be obligated to deliver me. But he is not. It says in verse 28, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. 
They will seek me diligently, diligently, but will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without the dread of disaster. In the end of all things, when we die and we are judged before God, there will be people who who ignored the call of God their entire life. And in that day when judgment is pronounced on them, they may call and say, Oh, God, save me. Oh, God, save me. Lord, Lord, didn't I, didn't I do this in your name? And, didn't I? and he will say, Depart from me. I never knew you. You are a worker of lawlessness. You ignored the call of wisdom in all of your life, and then you expect, after living like hell on earth, you expect to receive heaven in the end. But that's just not the way that it is. We are called upon to, by faith, listen to the call of God, believe in His Son, Jesus, and receive eternal life. And in this way, we will be at ease without dread of disaster.